It's Rob! Tony! And I'm Jeff. We're in gaming, and that's you! Hello gamers and welcome back to the end. I'm Rob, of course, or Warshag if you want to call me that, and we will be going from rank 2, as you can see here, to rank 1, and we are two games away, so we're really close from getting uh, to rank 1. Uh, we're going to be playing Reno Lock 2.0, the deck guide for that's coming out shortly, and uh, we're only playing two games because Reno Lock is definitely a really uh, slow-paced deck, and these de these guides are, this, this these games should la last at least uh, about 15. 10 to 15 minutes each so the actual video of just two games should be around well 20 to 30 minutes which is uh, about this uh, length of our normal road videos so starting off we're gonna get rid of the Malganus we're going against a legend player so this game's gonna be a bit hard and then I also wanted to touch up on our free-to-play episodes which I'm gonna be releasing shortly um, or the new ones releasing shortly so we actually recorded for four hours me and Tony did we got a lot done and then we realized when it was done the audio was completely fucked uh, the game audio was so loud that you couldn't hear a word me and him were saying. You could see our mouth moving, but you could not hear anything that we were saying. And this is because with the new laptop we ordered, there was settings in there that were really messed up, and I thought I had transferred all of our presets over, um, but apparently we didn't. So, I think we have nothing to do here. Um, so, when we the next free-to-play episodes that we're releasing keep in mind that it's not going to be where we left off with the mage we actually finished the mage we actually made a priest and uh, i think we're on the hunter now so we should be picking up you guys should be picking up where the hunter is i'm sorry about that there's nothing i cannot recover the video there's nothing we can do um we could play the dark peddler here but you just kill it with the zombie chai. i think we just tap and then coin out the azur drake or the Twilight Drake, and then if anything, we can Shadow Flame if he plays too many creatures. But ideally, he won't play that many creature, creatures because he had a he's had a crazy opening so far. But yeah, so the free to play guys, I'm sorry about that. It's gonna pick up from where we left off, which was again the Hunter, and um, yeah, that's that. And I'm also gonna put an annotation, but I know I'm still gonna get people like, oh, you're skimping out, you're buying gold, blah blah, blah and it's really no. It's not my fault. <laughs> I promise you, if I could have four hours of my life back and not a ruined video, I would, but it's just one of those things. So for those of you who watch the free-to-play, that's that. And um, yeah. So back to the game here. Obviously, we Azur Draked on turn three like we said we would. Ideally, we did not want him to bring up like some crazy field, but he is. For a priest, this is an insane start, but we're going to be able to kill every card on his field, get a card from the Death Lord, and he only has three cards in hand compared to our like million. So we're going to swing into Death Lord. Uh, do we like 10 health? I think we like 10 health back because we're going to kill both those zombie chows. So I think the Shadow Flame here is actually worth it. And as long as something horrible doesn't come out of his Death Lord on our field, we're good. Ooh, Dr. Boom. That's pretty good. So as long as he doesn't Shadow Ward death this Dr. Boom, it's actually a War Golem right now. Because <laughs> it doesn't have his little Boom Bot. Alrighty. So we're going to Void Caller, and maybe it'll bring out Lord of Draxus. Um, yeah, we'll Void Caller. I was thinking about Imp Gang Boss instead, uh, because if the Void Caller dies, it'll bring out the Imp Gang Boss. But this early on, he doesn't have Silence, and um, even if we brings out the Imp Gang Boss, it also can he get a Shadow Priest the Imp Gang Boss, which is bad. That's one of the main reasons. I just don't want the Void Caller to bring out the Imp Gang Boss, but I, it's a 50-50 chance. So we're going to swing into his 1-2, we'll Dark Bomb the uh, True Heart, and then we will play the Peddler, we'll see what we get. What do we got? Murgleton, Abusive, and Corruption. I like Murgleton, but I think Corruption is a little bit better here. Because we have 27 health and using our passive still is pretty important. Uh, Beast Sergeant's nice, but I think Corruption's a little bit better than these cards at this moment in time. Just in case he plays like Fusera or something crazy. Not that we can't siphon soul it, but we'll... I don't know. I just think having an extra, you know, oh shit spell, kill whatever I feel like it, is pretty nice. Knowing that he doesn't have any silences in his deck. If he was playing like a Druid, Corruption wouldn't be so great. So there's a Shadow Priest. If we would have played the, the Imp Gang boss, it obviously would have been taken. So I'm happy I didn't play that. He can have a 2-2 with no ability, that's fine. I think we're going to Siphon Soul the 4-7. And then we'll swing our 3-3 into his 2-2. And then swing to face again for 7 with Dr. Boom. Or should I say it? The War Golem. <laughs> we put in work with the War Golem. The Golden War Golem. He only has 4 cards in hand. We're going to... Another Sledge Voucher. Alright. He's going to heal for 4. That heal for 4 is going to get really annoying. Without a doubt. That's a lot to heal for. Alright. So we will play... I think we silence the Belcher and go face. 
And we'll actually play the... Uh, we could... No, I think we should play the... Yeah, the Imp Gang boss here is pretty good. And then... We could tap. Or right, we'll swing face. And I guess... No, we don't even have to tap. Our, I think our field is... Our, our hand is really strong right now. Because we have two demons that will come out of our uh, Void Caller. We've got the ability to make a taunt. And then we have the ability to play an 8-8 eight eight if he happens to do a lot of damage in one turn. Which I don't see him doing. So he's going to kill off our Void Caller. Who's going to come out? We get an Imp. That's why we played Imp Gang Ball so he didn't pop out. Malganus is going to pop out so he's going to buff all the other demons. Actually, he's going to make more demons now. This is good. He's doing some crazy shit to the field right now. But our demons are getting crazy. And a Holy Nova. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what is happening? So Malganus is going to actually die now to this Belcher. And our demons are going to lose their buff. Rip. Okay. So we're going to tap before we defend her. See what we get. Alright, so we're going to defend her in between the two imps. No, we're going to defend her in between the imp gang boss and an imp. And then swing our 1 1 imp to the 3 1. And then swing directly for 5. If we would have done it the other way, we would have lost an imp or had to kill off our imp gang boss. And if we leave our imp gang boss at 2 attack, then it has the chance of getting taken by the shadow priest, which we don't want at all. We don't want him taking our imp gang boss. It's too good to be taken. Alright. So the possibility of it being Chill Maul, Death Lord, and or Piloted Sky Golem is like 100%. Ooh. No, it's a huge toad. I can handle a huge toad. Okay, so I think we play Sylvanas and Shredder. No just because they're pretty beefy. We'll kill off his cure, the cure, and I think we'll kill off the huge toad, and we'll swing for three. It's gonna hit the imp gang boss to summon another imp, which is nice. Ideally, we didn't want it to kill the 2 1 imp. We just needed to hit anything else, which is fine. A light bomb messes, up, messes us up here, but, um,. Uh, we'll still get a card out of the Shredder and another Imp from Imp Gang Boss, and then we still have Jeweled Scarab to follow up and or Draxus just to summon 6-6 six, six every turn. Okay, so we're going to tap first before we play Scarab. My control tech, so we'll Scarab, see what we get. Spider tank is nice because it lives through uh, Light Bomb. And we'll play the uh, Mind Control tech because that's never going to get value. Because look at our field and we're going to go balls to the wall. And hopefully he doesn't top deck a Light Bomb. Even if he does, it's fine. And this is the new version of the deck. Yes, yeah, so that's a yes, yes. Or yep, yep. <sighs> Alright, so that's a well played. We are one game. Away from rank one. Alright, we gotta sit up for this one. Looking strong, man. It is. It's looking really good. I've actually refined this deck quite a bit. Like, we've changed not... We haven't changed a ton of the cards, but the cards we changed have really made a significant impact on making the deck more consistent. Like, surprisingly, Bane of Doom, for how RNG it is... My RNG is normally horrible, uh, but it's actually been doing pretty good. But, um, it's surprised that I would play that. Because normally I'd always get, like, Void Callers or what is it called? Like, Blood Imp or something. It's like 0-1 at the end of your turn to give a card plus 1 HP or something. Alright, so we're going against another Legend player, JoJo. We're going to get rid of this entire hand. This hand is pretty bad against the Druid. We're looking for, like, maybe a Dark Bomb to kill off the Ass Pirate if he plays it. And or Zombie Chow. Just early game cards. Mind Control Tech, not too bad if he's playing Rush Druid. The Hellfire is nice. And the Defender of Argus is pretty useless at the t at this moment. So he kept every card in his hand, which is really strange. It makes me think he's really, like, has some good shit. Zombie Chow at the top is sweet, though. Okay, so what? Is he gonna, like, coin into Ass Pirate? Coin into Wild Growth? Coin? Alright, so we can expect the Ass Pirate here. Innervate. Alright, so he's 4 drop. Again, assuming a Shredder. What? <laughs> Who gets that? Who gets that? Alright, so I do... <laughs> I guess we just tap here. I think we pretty much lose this game. If he draws any card that allows him to draw more cards, it's almost an instant lose. So, Ancient of Lore, Chromacus... Uh, even, like, Ysera to fill up the... Not, y Ysera would be bad. Come on, man. That's a well-played. Jesus, man. Wasn't I just talking about my RNG? <laughs> and then he pulls off some of this shit right here. We could mind control tech. But we maybe he'll get, like, a Nixia. So I think tapping's good. 
It's mind control attack or tap. I think tap is better. We'll swing for two. I guess the death lord is good. I mean the void caller, because then it could bring out Malganus, and Malganus could do maybe pretty good. So as long like it all depends what he draws. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? This is insane. Normally I don't even mind losing, but when it's like this, Chromacus into the double card draw, which gives him two lures, which gives him two more cards, which doubles those up. I'm done. There's no way. And uh, I can't I can't even respond to this guy. I can't. I'm sorry, dude. That just put me on super tilt. I can't. Alright, we're playing we're playing Cancer Shaman right now. There's no other way around it. After that, oh my god. <sighs> Alright, after that loss, we can't. We can't. can't. I can't. If anybody else has lost like that, let me know. But I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that that's happened to. Like, in that order. He has to... Alright, you have to go second to get coin. You have to get innervate. You have to get ancestral communication. Then you have to draw into a card that allows you to draw more cards. But he gets Chromacus, which gives him a card like two of the cards and the two cards that gave them were cards that draw more cards that draw more cards because of chromacus you got to be like fliffling my feathers or something like what the fuck man oh man super salty right now all right but at least our hand is good but we're going against a warrior so this could be bad if he draws war axe armor smith sledge belchers all of this is bad so obviously we start off with the tunnel trog following up with the totem golem to give it the buff and then because it overloads us one on turn three, we play a Whirling Zipomatic after that. So the Armorsmith is ideal, his best opener besides the War Axe. So Totem Golem buffing our guy to two attack, and then we'll swing for uh, two, of course. Okay, top deck the War Axe. Looking pretty good for us. Not. <laughs> uh, I guess Whirling Zipomatic. And we swing base. I would kill off the Armorsmith, but there's no point to as of now. Um, ideally, he doesn't play Sledge Belcher next turn, and then we'll be able to kill it with uh, our Horse Rider and Totem Golem. Oh, another Armorsmith. That's not good. So he's going to swing it. Wow, he's going to swing into that, which makes me think he's got something else to kill the Whirling Zipomatic. And it lives, though. That's really good. So he's running Slam. So, normally Slam is running uh, uh, Shredders, obviously. Play here, nothing really else to do. But Slam is something normally ran in Grim Patron, but it looks like he teched it into his Control Warrior because uh, Control. Yeah, Control. Patron does not play Sledge Belcher, and Patron normally doesn't play two Armor Smiths. Or at least mine doesn't. Okay, so we swing into the Sledge, see what we get out of our Shredder. Maybe it's something good. Ideally, it's a 4-4, but it's a 2-1. That's pretty bad. So, it's either Shredder or Spirits into Whirling Zipomatic, and maybe the Whirling Zipomatic can live long enough for us to be able to pump out 6 damage with it. Maybe kill both Armor Smiths. Maybe do 6 damage to face. I mean, he's at 24 health right now. It's turn 6, and we've only done 6 damage. Not good against the Warrior. The Death Spite is also really bad for us. The Shield Slam is also really bad for us. Oh my gosh. Hopefully, we don't lose again. That put us at three games away from rank one. When we were one game away from rank one. We were so close until Ancestral Communication came out. And said, no, Rob. I'm Ancestral Communication. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fucking steam pile the shit out of you. Alright, so Shredder number two. At least we drew two of the biggest cards in our deck. Um, yeah, the Shredders kind of help us sit on the board a little bit longer. And waste his death bite into maybe Shredder. Take four damage to the face. I mean, summon a 2-3, ideally, maybe a 3-2. At least kill one or two cards off the field. Horsemen can come kill off the other Armorsmith. We draw into Ancestral Knowledge and Doomhammer. That's ideal. What now? But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know anything anymore. Last game told me I know nothing about this game. Last game clearly said, Rob, you don't know shit about Hearthstone. This is what Hearthstone is, Rob. Ancestral communication. From Mac. Double ancient lore. Into double or into four cards of some sort, which you know aren't good. I'm playing Ancestral Communication. Expect that deck guide soon. If he can do that, I can do that. Ancestral communication's coming, boys. Don't you worry. Baron's bad for us. 
Baron's extremely bad for us. Baron is really fucking bad for us. <laughs> oh man. I just Doom Hammer. Alright, ancestral knowledge into Doom Hammer. Let's go. Hey, baby. Doom Hammer? No, Lava Burst works though. No Doom Hammer either. So we're gonna, I think we Lava Burst coin out the Argent Horse Rider. And this is where the coin comes into play. Always save your coin for when it really matters. So he's acted two cards in hand. We've got three cards in hand and one on board. Even though the horse rider only does two damage and his passive ups for two damage, at least we can stop him from effectively gaining more health and getting back to, you know, 30. Because right now he's at 26. We've done four damage over the course of eight turns. Hell Scream is really bad for us. <laughs> Alright, so we could Spirits. I think Passive and Flame Tongue, though, is a little bit better. It's a lot better now we got Taunt Totem. Wow, this is really good. That's the best Totem we could have asked for to stop Hellscream, because then we can Spirits right after that and really put a stop to him and ideally draw into Doomhammer. Doomhammer is a necessary card. Alright, never mind. Wow. Alright, Flame Tongue Totem down. He enraged Hellscream, which means our Spirits aren't... Wow. Okay, never mind. I was going to say, both spirits would die next turn and he wouldn't be able to smack face, but now with this setup, he can smack face. There's our freaking Doomhammer. Thank you, Doomhammer, for making appearance. Uh, spirits, like I said, or we could crackle, but spirits is a little bit better because we would die if we didn't. <laughs> so it's a lot better if we didn't. I guess crackle could kill the health screen, but we want to save crackle for face. Ideally... We, he's going to hit face for 10 damage, right? And it puts us at 7 health. And then we have a 2 drop on the field, 4 damage, yeah, that's 6. And then, plus, let's say each crackle hits for 4, so that's 8. That's 12. So we need Rock Biter or Lava Burst to Lock, We need Rock Biter and or Ancestral Communication to 2 damage to Hey, Rock Biter! Alright. I give this luck. I probably don't deserve this win, but because of last game, this game's like, yo, I'm sorry, Rob. We'll give you, we'll give you the Rock Biter, and I mean, we should have drawn Doom Hammer, Doom Hammer a little bit earlier than turn ten. <laughs> um, but like, when you're running two of the same card, you're ideally going to get it somewhere around turn four to five. Um, but sometimes you just don't draw at all. Sometimes it's the last two cards in the deck, which has happened before. So we're going to play one more game. Now we're one game away from rank one again. So ideally, we'll play that same fucking Ancestral Knowledge Druid deck, or Ancestral Communication Druid deck, and we'll, we'll completely blow him out. That would make me so happy. Like, I don't mind if you play that card on turn, you know, three, play it on turn four, maybe even on turn two, innervate it out, and then draw two cards that are, like, decent creatures, but they're not, you know, card draw creatures. But Jesus, come on, man. That's crazy. That might be a standalone video, just because of how crazy that was. Totem Golem, keeping that great two drop. We got our Lepernum, which is a, the one drop we're obviously going to be playing. Uh, ideally, Tunnel Trog is the best card on turn one, followed by the Totem Golem into the coin into the spirits. Uh, but we didn't get that. Yeah, can't always get... I think we coined the Totem Golem, actually, because we drew two two-drops, or, or the uh, Whirling Diplomatic, I mean. Because the Whirling Diplomatic is going to deal more damage over the course of the uh, the Totem Golem, and also, if we would have played the to we would have coined out Totem Golem, then we wouldn't have been able to play the two-drop the following turn. So, yeah, we'll Rock Biter the Owl, so the Owl doesn't kill our Whirling Diplomatic and swing for three, even though we can't swing for... Like, no normally, you'd save Rock Biter to, um, to, uh put on your doom hammer and or and or whirling zipomatic to pump out six damage instead of three but in this situation field control is pretty important early on against a, especially a paladin um so that's why we did that so he's gonna have peacekeeper or three two into a one two i think flame tongue totem in between the two and then we'll make a trade with this three three with our whirling because it's no longer useful like it's been it's been nerfed so <laughs> Not only did he silence it, but he reduced its attack down to one. So that thing's fucking useless. So that's why we made the trade there. Also, we don't want him killing the Flame Tongue Totem. The Zombie Chow in the 1-1 one -one is pretty... pretty. It's not good for us, but it's not bad. Um, do we put the Flame Tongue in between here? No, I don't think we... I think we hit face. And then do we play Shredder or Totem Golem? I don't think we play Flame Tongue. So we're going to swing for four. No, 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 no. Fuck, that was a mistake. 
Because we're going to have to put the Flame Tongue in between the two because we're going to kill right, off the uh, his 1-1 one, one, so he can't kill off the both totems with his uh, Zombie Chow. Damn it, dude. We missed out on two damage there. Yeah. So we're going to swing into this. And now he can... We'll Totem Golem to the left of this, obviously. But now, um, if he swings his Zombie Chow into the Totem, at least one... To we, we can have a Totem out. The whole point was to keep the Totems on the board for as long as possible. Um, if we would have played the Shredder... That would have been a good, I guess, a good stickier minion to play. But either way, they would have died to this Consecration, which we, we should have solved. Them. That's not so good. So he's going to kill the Totem Golem and or the Flame Tongue. Okay, so he killed the Totem Golem. We're going to gain 5 health, which isn't too huge. It looks like Shredder is going to be the card we play here. I guess Shredder would have been a little bit better card to play in that situation if I would have known he had Consecration. Turn 5, I, I mean, I don't know. So we, I think we're going to Lava Burst this. Yeah, we got two Lava Bursts. So we're going to Murgleton, see what we get out of our passive, and then we'll Lava Burst and uh, kill that Sledge Belcher. I think the Warlock passive is the best here. We can actually tap and see what we get, because we have five mana. Lava Burst only going to take three. So Lava Bursting one, and then killing off the slime. So this is looking really good. Um, yeah, so this is, this is pretty good. As long as he can't kill the Flame Tongue Totem, and the Murgleton sits at a 3-3, and we have a Lava Burst. I think we're pushing lethal. What is this? Nine... 14 is it 17 so we need to draw into three damage that's five so we're gonna swing swing oh no we can't doom hammer and lava burst oh man so it looks like we just doom hammer face okay that should be fine though i mean he's at four health what could he possibly do with eight mana um even a heal bot wouldn't save him because then we could hit face yeah, the heal pot puts him at 12, that's 4, that's 5, that's 9. We'd have to draw into just one more attack, so we draw into a rock fighter and a crackle. He still has to kill the flame tongue too, because the creatures are buffed. Cog hammer though, so that makes it a taunt. And a heal bot. Why didn't I see this coming? Why didn't I see the 7-7 seven, seven taunt and the, the plus 8 heals coming? Jesus, man. Wow, this is not good. So I think we, we need to get rid of the divine shield. I, we can't even attack with our weapon because we'll literally kill ourselves. We could Lava Burst, swing with weapon, hit him in the face for 10, get rid of Dr. Boom, but I don't think that's the way here. I think we tap. We can live one more turn. Either way, we've got two turns to live. Or we have next turn and then the following turn we die. Accessory knowledge is good, but we can't play it right now. We need the taunts up, and we're going to summon the 2-1, and uh, we'll swing our 1-1 into Dr. Boom. Ideally, we need to... He needs to kill a... I don't even know. I don't even know. Lay on hands is like... Really bad too. Now he's at 20 health, putting it even farther away from victory. Alright, so we're going to have to... Ancestral Communication next turn. We already used one Rock Biter, so we need to draw into that. We have no cards on the board. He's at 16 health now. And he... Why would he concede? I mean, I'm going to take the win. He beat rank 1, but why would he concede? I mean, we could have Lava Bursted the Boom and hit face Ancestral Communication. There, there was ways to deal with it, but I'm not sure why he did that. Anyway, we're rank one. You can't really complain about that. But I'm still so salty about that Druid game. I don't know why I'm so salty about that Druid game, but that just put me on edge. <laughs> if we would have lost to, like, the deck and it not do something crazy like that. Like, the deck's crazy as is, but if that was just one. That was, like, getting just getting steamrolled, just no, it's no bueno. Anyway, we are very close to Legend. I will be probably knocking out Legend today. I'll play a lot, see if we can get it. Um, so if I can, these videos will be posted very close together, and hopefully I'll have them out by the new year. Um... But if not, there is some lag time in between when I actually record and when the videos are posted. So ideally, this will come before the end of the month. But if this comes up after the new month into the beginning of January, I'm sorry about that. But with how many videos we're doing and how long it takes for me to edit, render, upload, tag, annotate, and all that good stuff, these videos, sorry for any uh, lag on that end. So with all of this said, so very close, guys. We're almost there. As always, I am Warshak and happy whatever the hell day it is.